Hello, it's Catherine here at Quilt Direct. I thought I would take this opportunity, having this machine that's particularly noisy, a really good opportunity to show you what a difference a good clean and oil will make. Bear with me while I just run this machine in a straight stitch for you. Can you hear that banging? I don't think you can fail. Let's see what we can do to improve the situation. First of all, I'm going to strip the machine. I'm going to take the current needle out, which is actually a new needle, because I was just wondering why it was making such a horrible noise. I'm going to remove the presser foot. I'm going to cut the thread. Okay, and pull it through the machine. I'm now going to take the feed dogs down and remove the stitch plate. If you'd like to come around, we'll then show you the bobbin area and we'll go from there. All right, are we ready to see what's underneath? Here we go. And already we can begin to see some of the traumas this machine has been through. If you look here, I can see a met metallic thread fiber. All right, so that is a real sure problem for making machines sound very noisy and building up problems. There's lots of bits of short threads that need to be removed. So we'll start at the beginning and I'm going to first of all remove the bobbin and the bobbin case. There we go. I'll take the bobbin case out very carefully pulling the thread through so I don't damage the back spring here. And we will clean this and, and make sure it's nice and clean from lint in a moment. Okay, so now I'm going to release the retainer by pushing the lever here to the left and dropping the race uh, retainer. I'm now going to remove the hook, which is half of a circle. And we're going to then look inside here and see if we can um, make it cleaner. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little mini dust it in and I'm just going to sweep around and take out the worst of any lint that's a bit in affecting us. Okay, there we go. So just give it a little bit of a clean. The next thing I'm going to do is get a little bit more particular and I'm just going to brush it out with a paintbrush. There we go. Any more will come out hopefully. It's not actually looking too disastrous in here. There isn't an awful lot of lint build up. So maybe we'll just see how it goes as we go on. So the first next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clean the race itself. And I do this with a cotton bud. It needs to be a good quality cut and cotton bud in order not to put more lint in than it takes out. And the way I'm going to do that is going to be quite difficult for me to show you um, in the original position, but I'm going to take it to the left hand here by using needle up, needle down and I'm going to put the pressure on the back of the bud and I'm going to swing around halfway and you can see now that I'm beginning to get a little bit of old dirty oil and grease build up. So again, have you got it? Okay, and again. Okay, so now I'm going to do that on the other side. I'm going to use needle up, needle down to raise the needle and I'm going to come along on this side and I'm going to do the same again. There we go. And there's more. And there's more. There we go. All right, so hopefully that's now starting to give us a cleaner race. So I'm going to use it now in the needle down position again and I'm going to choose just to see if I've got anything in the race itself. I've got a wooden skewer and I'm just going to, on these CB machines, we can just take it around and just check there's nothing in the way. Now here it is. Now, can you see that? I wonder what we're going to find in here. I've actually got something in the race. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Can you pick this little bit here? Okay, I can see that there's a little bit there. Can you see it chasing? There it is. And that was in the race. Okay, just that little bit there. And that probably wasn't helping with the noise that the machine was making. 
Okay, so now I'm going to put a drop of oil on. So I'm going to use a paint, a paintbrush, a screwdriver, and some of the correct type of oil for this machine. And I'm just going to put a drop on my screwdriver, take it and pop it into the race. Now, hopefully you will be able to see that moving along the race. Do you see that? Lovely. There we go. So now hopefully that will help improve the situation with the noise that the machine was making. So now we've oiled the machine. We need to just check that the race is nice and clean. The hook is nice and clean. So here we go. Give it a little bit of a, and I'm just going to check that there's no burrs on here. There, uh, look. No, we're all right. There's no sharp edges there. So hopefully the machine is not going to be giving us any problem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the machine and hopefully you can see in. And because the needle is in needle up position, there's a half a semi, there's a semicircle here on the left hand side. That means I need to put the hook in on the right hand side like that and just lay it like that. And then all I need to do is drop it forward and then click it back into place. Now I'm going to just give my bobbin case, this is a CB bobbin case, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a dust in case there was any lint in there. And then we're going to re-thread the bobbin. This has already been wound, but we'll go in, making sure that when we turn, the machine, the, th the bobbin goes in a clockwise direction, in through the slit, around the top of the bobbin case, and in at 12 o'clock. There we go, we're all in. And you must make sure that the thread is in those little claws like that. So now I'm going to take the lever, which means that it will actually stay in the bobbin case, and I'm going to put it over the spindle. And if you look, the finger is a sort of at 11 o'clock. And I'm going to release, rotate around, and you can hear it click, and then click again. Now your bobbin and your bobbin case are secure just cut off the thread like that and we're done. I'm now going to put the needle plate back on. Now I can see that this one's had a little bit of damage here but it doesn't feel rough so it should be all right. And I'm going to place the needle plate with the target on the back right hand corner and this side flush with the edge of the aperture. All I need to do then is holding it here is press down and that's the simple and easy way and you won't damage any of the little springs underneath. Just for your information while we're doing this, these little springs here can be bent very easily by trying to get it in the wrong way. But don't worry, all you need to do is ask us for some of these and we can pop those in the post for you. And then when you've got them aligned, all you need to do is remember always to put your needle plate in like that. All right, so all I'm going to do now is give the machine a little wipe over and when we come back you'll find that hopefully we're looking a little bit cleaner and tidier and we'll put a new needle in, put the presser foot on and we'll see how she sews. Okay, welcome back. You can see now that I've given the machine a bit of a wipe over with a special cleaning foam with a micro uh, microfiber cloth, uh, something that the Benina doctor will do when the machine is serviced later. All right then, so I'm going to put the presser foot on. Oops. Okay, put the presser foot on. All right, and then we're going to put that needle back in because that was new when we started um, before we cleaned the machine. Pop that one back in all the way up, flat to the back. Okay. And then I'm going to raise the feed dogs and hopefully thread the machine on top. I'm going to hold my thread here and I'm going to follow the arrows on this machine. So holding the thread here, checking that my needle is in the up position and my press of foot is up because I need to be sure that my tension discs are open so that the thread can sink in between them and stitch correctly from this first moment. So I'm going down into the tension discs, 
around the check spring, in on the right hand side, out on the left hand side. So I'm in the check lever and then I'm going to use this, which is the first needle guide. And then at the top of the needle, there's another one. And that's what keeps the thread aligned with the groove in the needle to make sure that you're going to get good quality stitching. Down we go with the needle threader, around it goes, push down, take it through, and this one just leaves a little loop. This can be updated if you have a needle threader of an older generation, and the newer ones will bring the thread further up. All I need to do now is just cut my thread, and there we are, we have our machine ready to go. All right, folks, let's see what happens now when we start to sew. So I'll put, pop it down. I'm using the foot control on this machine. I'm just going to take it very slowly to start with. Oh my goodness, I think we've done the job. Thank you for watching our video. I do hope that you have found the cleaning and oiling of a CB Benina model of use.